Good morning, everybody. Also from my side, I'm Benedikt Zoya. And it's my pleasure to present to you for the first time the new GIGOS focus area on AI for Geodesy or AI for G. Well, AI is currently a pretty big topic, let's say. So I could mention, for example, the advances in large language models like ChatGPT. But I would like to introduce this topic from another perspective. There was actually another major breakthrough, I would say, in the application of AI. And in this case, it's weather forecasting. So traditionally, the best weather forecasts have been produced with physics-based models, for example, from the ECMWF, uh, state of the art, basically. And yeah, of course, people have tried to use also AI for this purpose, but so far have not achieved the um, same results. This year, however, for the first time, new models have been proposed that have actually for the first time outperformed or at least got comparable results um, with um, machine learning compared to the best previous model like the ECMWF uh, integrated forecasting system and also then highly uh, published in nature. Now also actually ECMWF uh, confirmed this, they did their own analysis uh, using that um, machine learning model which has been published open access and they also confirmed that basically the performance in the prediction accuracy here in this plot you can see the six day forecasts is really comparable um, yeah, to their own um, forecasts. Well, so it seems like certainly AI has a lot of potential in the sciences now, what about AI for geodesy? And here I think we have to just ask a few questions. First of all, can certain geodetic problems be addressed uh, with machine learning? In that regard, here are some typical problems where machine learning is really strong. That um, starts with data assimilation, which is basically combining different data sets. Yeah, quite important in geodesy, I would say. Then it's about spatial modeling or time series prediction. Yeah, we know that Earth orientation parameters have to be available in near real time, so the prediction is also very important. And then finally, anomaly detection. This is something um, which we all do when we, for example, analyze problems in time series or um, have to detect some outliers. So I would say, yes, uh, this is certainly relevant in Geodesy. And then also machine learning models or AI in general is in particular quite good if you have a lot of data. So is there enough geodetic data that can support these machine learning models? And I would say nowadays that's clearly uh, the case. We have a huge increase in recent years in the amount of geodetic data, for example, from GNSS and also, for example, from INSA. And yeah, here's a map that shows like the location of 18,000 permanently monitoring uh, GNSS stations, which can be used to train the machine learning models. And we also don't have, we should not forget that um, in addition to the primarily geodetic data, we also use a lot of auxiliary data, for example, weather models or other environmental models, which have in recent years also become much more uh, resolved and that's why there's also a lot more data available in this regard. So um, I think we can also answer this question positively. So the idea was then for that reason to establish a new GIGOS focus area that focuses on this topic, AI for Geodesy. So far it's um, chaired by me and um, supported by Maria Casalimi. And luckily it was approved uh, earlier this year by the uh, governing board of uh, GIGOS and the executive committee. Well, we should also ask the question, why should this be a GIGOS focus area? And here I would argue that we really want to put a focus on improving the geodetic products with machine learning. Now, the obje objectives of this focus area are thus to, first of all, develop new improved geodetic products using techniques from the field of AI and machine learning, including yeah, the most fitting uh, geodetic data sets and also auxiliary data and then also develop fitting and suitable machine learning algorithms that are dedicated to these uh, applications. And then also, I think it's very important that we actually evaluate these models properly. That means we should actually think of, is it necessary to use machine learning compared to classical statistical methods? And I think it's clear that not for all purposes we can use machine learning. And then also very important is, 
and for machine learning that's maybe not so straightforward from the beginning is to also do a proper uncertainty quantification to get an error assessment and um, yeah, a level where you can see where, this, uh, where the accur accuracy or uncertainty of these um, machine learning products are at. Yeah, when I uh, speak of improved geodetic products, um, what do I mean? For example, with machine learning, you could think of creating higher resolutions in your data sets. Um, for example, um, in both in terms of space and um, time, also combining various different data sets to get maybe a bit more uh, accuracy. And then also through predictions, increase, uh, increase the quality of data that are available in near real time. Well, and in order to achieve these objectives, um, we have created several joint study groups that are listed here. We cover all the different aspects of geodesy from geometry, gravity field, and uh, orientation. And we have um, groups related to AI for GNSS remote sensing, AI for gravity field and mass change, and AI for Earth orientation parameter prediction concretely. And I don't want to go into too much detail here because there will be presentations later in this session that will uh, a bit more detailed describe what their, uh, what their plans are. Now, what is the status right now for the um, focus area itself and also for the joint study groups that I have listed? The terms of reference have been finalized and are also now available on the website. So please visit the link if you want to read more details. Thanks a lot to Martin for updating the website uh, in a timely manner. And I'm very happy to see that there has been a great interest in um, being active in this field. So far we have already 60 members, or actually more than that, distributed over all these study groups from various countries and institutions. So I think this is a great start to the focus area. Now, actually, there's a new development. Just a few days ago, I received the um, terms of reference for yet another study group, which will be now also um, integrated into the focus area, focused on geodetic deformation monitoring. And maybe just to give a bit more details, because there will be no presentation in, in this session about it, um, it will be chaired by yeah, Mohamed Shafiri, together uh, with Mohamed Omi Dali Sarandi. And it will focus on um, using, for example, INSAR and GNSS data to detect spatial temporal patterns related to deformations, speaking of earthquakes, volcanism, and, and other effects. And in GNSS time series, for example, detecting the offsets with machine learning and forecasting also some of the deformations into the future. I'm sure you will hear more about that in an upcoming meeting. Yeah. They already have a few uh, members, so I think they're also very motivated to start these uh, activities. With that, um, I want to actually come to the end because there is much more uh, time than for the other presentations for the study groups. So in summary, I can um, yeah, luckily report that the start of the focus area has been successful. We have our study groups that have been established, and yeah, we are very much looking forward to interesting interactions in the future. If you're interested, then please contact us uh, at this email address, ai4g at gigos.org. I think it's easy to remember. So thanks very much. <laughs> Would you have a short question about the general focus area? Yes, well, thank you very much for this overview. It is really excellent, actually. But um, concerning your objectives, I would like to make one remark in the following sense that although it's implicit in your list, I would like to see a more explicit articulation of the fact that uh, what we also need in our task list is uh, to develop an understanding uh, and actually some more theory on why and when and under what circumstances machine learning will indeed perform better than our classical techniques. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at sort of the development, um, for instance, neural networks have become popular nowadays because of the high performance computing. Mm -hmm. 
actually that was a big stimulus also for Bayesian techniques. And nowadays Bayesian techniques are all over the place and they're also used when they actually should not be used. Um, and I think we should avoid that situation if, if we think of the, uh, the machine learning techniques. So I would like, if possible, a more explicit uh, articulation of the fact that we're also trying to aim at developing theory and understanding mm -hmm. on what are the circumstances when these techniques really perform better so that we get a deeper understanding of it. Yeah, thanks a lot to, uh, for the comment and I think it's a very good suggestion. I think the theory could really also be developed much further. So there has been actually in the past uh, uh, yeah, a joint study group of the ICCT, the Intercommission Committee on Theory, which also focused on machine learning in geodesy. However, that has been now actually discontinued. So maybe this could be actually a good reason to restart it and address actually these particular topics. So I think, I'm not sure if it should fit in the GIGOS focus area, but it would be great if some activities go in that direction. I agree, yes, thanks. So I have a question. A lot of us now have started playing with chat GPT. It's becoming very ubiquitous. Um, we know that in training AI, the, the data that it is put in, the there are biases, there are potential errors. Has there been a discussion about creating like a geodesy GPT so that if someone types in a question in chat GPT about geodesy, and sometimes the, the answers are pretty good, right? But the battery just oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah that's an interesting GPT. suggestion uh, thanks a lot um, so the idea would be basically to have um, better information on geodesy so what is geodesy how is it defined what are the components of geodesy so maybe it would help to make a lot of these texts that we have uh, better accessible to the, those that train these models or, yeah, I think it's quite challenging to retrain such a big model, to be honest, just for geodesy, let's say. And yeah, I think it could be an interesting exercise just to learn how this works. But yeah, um, <laughs> I think it's a bit uh, out of the scope of this uh, particular group, but interesting idea, yeah. 